Morning everybody. Not that every, anybody's there at the moment. Let's see who's coming in. We're having a slow start this morning. Here we go, first one in the house, Rebecca Townley. Good morning. My knee's a bit sore from yesterday, but we're good, we're good. Oh, Maddie's in, early bird. Morning, Maddie. You're ticked on the register. Everyone else is a tad slower this morning. They're probably just getting into place and sorting themselves out in their jammers still. Good morning, George's second person ticked off the register. Nice to have you with us. So we've, we're up to nine so far on the register. Who's checking in next? We've got a first, a second and a third already. Here's Dawn. And Jane, lovely, well, welcome, good morning. Lovely to have you with us today on this pretty miserable rainy morning here in Leicester. Good morning Cambridge is in and Bristol lovely to have you. Come on let's get them lumbers up. So what are people planning today after our preparation warm-up circulation boosting uncrumple ourselves from our nighttime sleep. Morning Di, she's from Somerset, Bob's in. And Richie, morning Richie, nice to have you with us. Here's Wayne. You ticked off the register now Wayne, well done. <laughs> yeah, Sunday morning slow starters dawn. I'm one of those too. Glasgow's here, we've got a few few in from Scotland now. And Christine is holding up the Welsh massive. <laughs> Let's have a check on the time. All right, we've got a one minute countdown then and we will get going. Morning, Trevor and Donna. Donna from up to North, welcome. Morning, Alison as well. Penzance, oh lovely. Right, welcome everybody. Okay, let's have a quick check on time. Well, I think we've got a few more seconds to go. Morning, Suzanne, thanks for saying hi. Oh, ah, so your son's from Lutterworth. Yeah, that's about 20 minutes from me. We're in a nice part of the country here. Ah, Chesterfield's in. How's the crooked spire this morning, Margaret? Okay, here we go then. Are we ready to get moving? Three, two, one. Good morning, everyone. My name's Kelsey Leverton from Later Life Training. And here we are with our 8 a.m. breakfast snack on Sunday the 10th of May um, and we're going to get ourselves going, prepare our bodies for the day ahead and remember what we're aiming to do is add on extra movement minutes to whatever you're already doing in your, in your daily week. I say that daily week. Um, so nice to have you people. Have a think about where you'd like to start with your first movement. We're doing some circulation boosting you may sit if you like, you may stand, so get yourself into whatever position you want to be in. I will too. 
and have a think about what your posture's doing. Let's try and lengthen it out. So standing tall through your legs, standing or sitting tall through your middle bits. Try and have the shoulders as relaxed away from your ears as you can, lengthening through the top of your head. So we're trying to lengthen out the spine. When you're ready, in seated or in standing, and remember if you need to hold on at any point, you can have full support or you can hold on with one hand, whatever's fit for you. We're going to start moving the ankles. So this can be a leg march where you're picking up the feet, clearing the floor, or if you'd prefer to start seated or standing, just with some heel pedals, foot pumps, whatever you want to call them, just to move through the ankles and move through the feet. We're going to do about a minute of this circulation boosting. If you want to pause there and have a go with moving your arms, so both arms together if you feel happy to do so. If not, we can get one arm on the go. If you're in standing, just have your feet around hip distance apart. If you need to swap sides, swap sides with your support. Or alternatively, let's bring in both arms together. Remember, we've got a small uh, different option here in the seat where you can do a little reach and pull, a bit of a row, tight movement with your arms there. Okay, have a pause. Wherever you are now, we're going to be putting those two bits together. So have a think about your posture again. Hold on as you get your legs moving. The same in the chair. If you want to hold on to the sides of the chair, that's great. Sitting up tall, lifting the chest. And bring in the arms, one arm if you like to start with. Or if you feel steady and stable in standing. Ooh, too many S's there. Um, you can bring arms and legs working together and you can be here in the chair as well either with your arm swings or with your this is a bit of a coordination one for me <laughs> swinging those arms from the shoulders we're going to be mobilizing our shoulders loosening up these shoulder joints next have a stop there settle your feet down bring the arms to a close you shouldn't be out of puff as such. Your breathing might have changed just a fraction, uh, but you shouldn't be puffing and huffing and puffing. <laughs> right, moving on to our shoulder circles then. If you want to start off with just a few preparatory lifts and lowers, that's absolutely fine. Have a look just before you decide what you're doing. If you do need a light support, we can do exactly the same in standing. Or if you're free of support, you don't need it whilst you're doing this movement. Aim for about three, four or five, and then have a pause. We're gonna move on to our shoulder circles now. So moving the shoulders up, back and down, which is great for opening up your posture. So I'm just gonna come down here so you can see the circle that I'm drawing with my shoulders. Remember, you can hold on to your support in front of you. Or you can leave your arms just loose by the side of your body. Let your elbows hang loose as well. Big shoulder circle and a little squeeze and pinch of the shoulder blades together just before you relax back and down. So up, round, skimming the ears, back and down. Look, Just look at that last down bit. And you should see the space between your ears and shoulders just increase. Shoulder circles, done. Let's move on to the head and neck now. So we're gonna be loosening up uh, the neck by turning the head. So sometimes turning the head can offer a bit of a, throw a bit of a balance challenge for you. Just do these nice and smooth, really smooth and controlled. Holding on if you like sat down or on your feet. We're looking over to one side first, heading back to the middle, and if everyone can just pause there for a split second before going off 
in the other direction. So by loosening up the shoulders first, we've actually started to help what's happening here around the neck. And what you'll find is, hopefully, is that after a couple of head turns in each direction, you might be able to feel your neck loosening up just a little bit more so you're able to twist a fraction further. Try not to force the twist though, we don't want the body to go with it, just the head to turn with a pause in the middle, seated or standing. All right, I think we should be about done with that one. We're gonna move on to the neck movement. So this is where we lengthen out the neck and help the head sit in a more upright position on top of your shoulders. So uh, just a little bit of a closer up view for you. You can put your fingers just on your chin, keep your chin level with the floor and you're tucking the chin in and relaxing or just resting your head back into its normal place. If you're not sure about this one and you need to hold on in standing, then do so. Having your feet hip distance apart can help with your stability as well. And just tucking the head in. You may feel a bit of lengthening going on at the top, uh, around the back of your neck in those muscles. And again, in seated, just holding on if you need to with one side. Three, four or five of them should be good enough just to help that lengthening and that mobilising of those stacks of spine. I've got a little visitor with me today. What's he doing? A little fly trapped in the room. Okay, so that's your trio at the top done. Moving on to your middle. Three here, a trio of trunk, I believe we've been calling them. We'll start off today with a back extension, which you can do in the chair, of course. So just with your hands around at the side of your hips, either hands there or palms, depending on what's happening in your shoulders and how comfortable they feel. And it's like you're lift, being lifted up here, keeping your head forwards, looking forwards, and then just arching into the lower back. So this counterbalances everything that we do where we end up in a bent over forwards position. You might want to have both hands onto your support level here. If you're in standing, again, you might feel a bit more comfortable with your feet positioned just a little bit wider. Um, again, same, same movement, lifting up through your chest, eyes forwards, and just a small lean back. Depending on how your balance feels, we can have both hands, one hand, or both hands round at the side of the hips. So this is a great exercise if you're doing gardening today, if you're moving around in the kitchen, if you've got the bath to clean. <sighs> is that a Sunday job? I'm not really sure. But if you've been doing a lot of leaning forwards, then have a practice. Crowbar some of these in after you've been doing um, some of those activities. Okay, so you should have done, again, up to around five repetitions of those. <clears throat> We're going to do a tad more circulation boosting before we press on. So, depending on where you'd prefer to be, seated or standing, take up a little bit of support if you need, and let's get the feet moving. Again, I'm needed in to excuse my clicky ankles. It's not the floorboards, the floorboards are sound. Standing up tall as you do so. Bringing in an arm, if that feels okay for you. Trying to swing it from the shoulders. And that second arm can come into the mix if you feel okay with it. So as you're moving, trunk area, try and keep that feeling strong and lengthened as your arms and your legs move around it. All right, take a pause, we're done with that. Moving on then, we've got side bends and the twists 
to do. <clears throat> so feet a bit wider if you're remaining in standing with your knees soft. So just sit into those knees a little bit. Use the seam of your trousers <clears throat> to guide you so that you're trying to keep your top half in line with your bottom half. And I've got support here and I can change sides as I move to the other side. Just have a look at the seated version just before you decide which one's for you. In the front portion of the chair, feet flat, knees and feet about hip distance apart and bottom glued to the chair. We don't want any lifting or, um, of, of your hips away from the chair as you take a side bend. As you take that side bend, you're more likely to be keeping in line with your chair leg. It might only be a small bend for you as you loosen up the muscles as well as the joints in your middle section. Just taking a small pause in the middle like we were doing with the head turns. It may challenge your balance to a lesser or greater degree. So again, three, four, five of those should do nicely. We just have a look at the time. Oh, we're 12 past already, oh no. Um, we have got our trunk twist to do. So a few different options here. If you're sat in the chair, one hand across, other hand to the side, and have a look over your shoulder. Back to the centre, check your posture before heading off onto the other side. In standing, feet apart again can help with keeping your hips pointing forwards. You can reach across and hold on to your support and then work it round the other way. Or alternatively, if you feel steady in standing, you can have your arms just loosely folded into your body. And hopefully, if you have a look there, you should see that it's just my top half moving with my bottom half staying still. We do tons of twisting and bending through our daily activities. Twisting, turning over in bed, putting seat belts on, not that we're going out much, of course, but it, you'll be good at that when we get back to it. Um, bending down to pick items up from lower levels, we could use a sideways bend in motion. The most important walking joint in the, in the body, not in the bottom, ankles. Let's have a think about our starting position for ankle mobility. Your first option, you might want to be all the way back in your chair, leg lifted, pointing the toes and pulling them back, like so. If ankles, feet and toes are not good for you today, um, then you can do some hip walking. So transferring the weight, shifting one hip forwards as if you'd be walking in standing. There'd be a similar action going on. In seated or in standing, you could do your toe tap and your heel dig. Holding on to the support, this shouldn't feel like a balance challenge. And the standing leg should be the one nearest to your support. And of course, when you're ready to turn around, just take a steady turn and make sure that again, your standing leg is nearest to your support, whatever you're holding on to. Can you see the knee is lifting? To, and there's not any weight being put onto the heel and the toe. All of my weights through the standing leg. So again, three, four or five of those, again, can be done at any point during the day. I think that's all of our mobility movements for today. So use these, crowbar some of these in. If you've been sat for a while, have a move of your ankles before you get out of seated and start to walk. If you've been, like I say, leaning over in the kitchen, cleaning the bath, whatever it may be, what's made you lean over, 
do some counterbalancing with that back extension and so on and so forth. The message really is just keep on moving. So it's been great to have you again this morning, people. Um, way over time again, but it's all good. We've just got extra, extra movement minutes in now. So thanks for coming, everyone. Thanks for getting yourselves out of bed on this Sunday morning. Um, I will be with you tomorrow morning as well because I've got the morning shifts mostly for next week. Um, and keep on crowbarring.